Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon all of you. We start our proceedings tonight with the recitation of the Holy Quran with translation by Imam Salman Tariq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمر ربي بالقسط وأقيموا وجوهكم عند كل مسجد Thank 
کروں آئی شل ناؤ پریزینٹ بفور یو دی انگلش ٹرانسلیشن آف دی ورس از تھرٹی ٹو تھرٹی ٹو آف چیپٹر سیون اینڈ ورس نائنٹی ون آف چیپٹر سکسٹین فرام دا ہولی قرآن جسٹ ریسائٹیڈ بفور یو In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful, say, my Lord has enjoined justice and fix your attention aright at every time and place of worship and call upon him, making yourselves sincere towards him in religion. As he brought you into being, so shall you return. Some has he guided, and as for others, error has become their desert. They have taken evil ones for friends to the exclusion of Allah, and they think that they are rightly guided. O children of Adam, look to your adornment at every time and place of worship and eat and drink, but exceed not the bounds. Surely he does not love those who exceed the bounds. Verily, Allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and giving like kindred and forbid indecency and manifest evil and wrongful transgression. He admonish you that you may take heed. <clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. Beloved Hazur, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, I'm honored to welcome all of you to this, the inauguration reception of Batu Samad Mosque. We are blessed today with the presence of His Holiness, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, the fifth successor to the founder of our community, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Let me begin by sharing a few words about the founder of our community the founder of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, prophesied that a Mahdi, or a reformer, and Isa, or the Messiah, would come after him to preserve and revive Islam's true and essential teachings. We believe that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad occupied both roles and was that very person whom the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, spoke about, and for whom the followers of all the major faiths of the world are waiting to come. So, our community believes that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is the promised Messiah, and he founded our community in 1889 as a movement within Islam to revive the faith, reunite humanity, and defend the vitality of the Quran. He came to end religious wars, condemn bloodshed, and restore morality, justice, and peace. Today, the community founded by the Promised Messiah in 1889 has now been formally established in more than 207 countries and territories with membership exceeding tens of millions. A unique feature of our community, which is also the driving force behind our worldwide efforts towards peace, is Khilafat, or a spiritual caliphate. His Holiness, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, is our spiritual Khalifa, our leader, indeed the Khalifa of Islam. And he, guides, he is a guide to tens of millions of people around the world. 
His directives are aimed at fostering absolute justice, human welfare, and social harmony. Under His Holiness's leadership, our community has now inaugurated over 16,000 mosques, 500 schools, and 30 hospitals, and has translated the Holy Quran into 75 languages. In the true spirit of Islam, the community also operates a disaster relief and development NGO named Humanity First. His Holiness is a tireless champion of global peace. He has visited the United States on three prior occasions. In 2012, he gave a historic address to a bipartisan audience of over 30 members of US Congress on the subject of just relations between nations. His Holiness has recently corresponded with prominent world leaders in the Islamic world and the West, warning of the dire consequences of a nuclear war and of weapons profiteering. His Holiness has also addressed the European Union Parliament in Brussels on overcoming the challenge of extremism. Today, we have gathered for the official inauguration of the nearby Bathus Samad Mosque. Since August 2015, the Baltimore chapter of our community moved into this new 13,000 square foot structure. A double story white building with white minarets and a dome attracts worshipers from diverse ethnic groups. The mosque provides equal access and space for men and women. For several years, the mosque has been engaged in regular work serving local food banks, blood drives, disaster relief efforts, and charity fundraisers. We are honored to have among us a diverse array of leaders. We thank United States Senator Ben Cardin, whom we will be hearing from shortly, and the Mayor of Baltimore, Catherine Pugh, for meeting with His Holiness a short while ago. And our guests today span many different countries, cities, and religious denominations. Indeed, the diversity of today's audience is emblematic of the diversity of Baltimore. Looking around this room, the message of our community extends to people of all races, nationalities, and creeds from all walks of life, all part of our common humanity and a part and parcel of our slogan, love for all, hatred for none. We hope you enjoy today's program, and with that introduction, I now invite the Honorable U.S. Senator Ben Cardin, the senior senator from the state of Maryland, who has been serving in this role since 2007. Your Holiness, we welcome you to Baltimore. You honor us with your presence, and you inspire us by your leadership. The communities that you lead have helped build a stronger and more peaceful Baltimore, Maryland, and America. And your leadership has been global in communities around the world. Your message of peace and love are desperately needed now more than ever before. And you inspire us by your presence and your words here in Baltimore that we all can do better. I'm honored to represent the people of Maryland in the United States Senate, and I'm honored to welcome you to this great city, and we very much appreciate you taking time from your global schedule to come here with your message of peace and hope for mankind. God bless. Thank you, Senator Cardin. Let me now invite the Honorable John Wobbensmith, the Secretary of State for the State of Maryland. The Secretary is the 71st Secretary of State for Maryland, appointed by the Governor and confirmed by the Maryland State Senate in 2015. The Honorable Secretary. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Your Holiness. 
Welcome. Uh, welcome to Baltimore and welcome to Maryland. Uh, on behalf of Governor Larry Hogan and his administration, it's an honor to be with all of you here this evening. And I thank you for inviting me to take part in this very special occasion. The state of Maryland is proud to be home to the U.S. headquarters of Ahmadiyya, Muslim community, and the inauguration of the mosque here in Baltimore is indeed an historic event. Maryland has a very diverse population, and that diversity contributes to all sectors of our society. Your Holiness, you have an ambitious travel schedule, and you carry an important message. The Amanatiyaya value of service to humanity through the promotion of peace and justice is most admirable and necessary to help us overcome our many mortal frailties. This is a message we, Muslim or not, can all embrace. On a personal note, my years living and working overseas afforded me a greater understanding of and appreciation for different cultures and religions. That experience had a profound effect on me both personally and professionally, and I appreciate that as the Maryland Secretary of State I regularly have the opportunity to welcome international guests to our wonderful state and champion the cause of cross-cultural respect and understanding. And I thank all of you for being here this evening. Your Holiness, I wish you a continued safe journey and many blessings as you travel the world. And I do have with me this evening, uh, Governor Hogan has issued a governor citation uh, to the Bayasama Mosque, and uh, it reads as follows. Greetings, be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition of a tribute to honor and commemorate the inauguration of Bayasama Mosque, with great respect and congratulations on this distinguished occasion, and as the people of Maryland join together in expressing our sincere best wishes for a memorable celebration, we're pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation under my hand and seal of uh, this 20th day of October 2018, signed by Governor Larry Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, and myself as Secretary of State. And I will uh, present this now. Thank you so very much, and enjoy the evening. I now would like to invite our national president, Dr. Mirza Makfur Ahmed, to introduce His Holiness. Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and privilege to present His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, Khalifatul Masih, may Allah strengthen his hand, the fifth successor of Prophet Messiah alayhi salam, may peace be upon him. So I request Hazur. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the gracious, ever merciful. All distinguished guests, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to all of our guests who have taken the time to join us here today. Your attendance is noteworthy and commendable, given that you are attending a religious community's function at a time when interest in religion is on the decline in much of the world. It is of even greater note that you are attending a Muslim e event where a new mosque is being inaugurated despite the fact that most of you are non-Muslims and have no religious or emotional affiliation with mosques or with Islam. Indeed, we are all well aware that, regrettably, we live in a time where many people hold reservations and even fears about Islam and about Muslims. In light of all of this, undoubtedly, your attendance is praiseworthy and obliges me to prof profess my deepest gratitude to all of you. Moreover, I should clarify by my, uh, that my thanks is not offered as a mere courtesy. Rather, it is a religious duty placed on me by Islam as the Prophet of Islam, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, taught that a person who fails to express his appreciation to other people cannot be grateful to God Almighty. Hence, I consider it my religious obligation to express my sincere gratitude to all of you. Moving on, I anticipate that you will have joined us today in the hope of learning more about Islam and to find out the reasons why we have built this mosque. Certainly, given the fact that many people have misgivings about Islam due to what they have seen in the media, such curiosity and interest is natural. Indeed, due to the climate in which we are living, if you harbor any fears or concerns about the mosque, it is quite understandable. Undoubtedly, in much of the world, there is now an increasingly prevalent view that Muslims are to be feared. As a collective, Muslims have been branded as troublemakers who seek to divide society and desire to shatter the fabric of social cohesion and peace. Muslims are seen as people who are neither able to live together in peace and nor are they able to live peacefully with others. 
Further, the construction of a mosque is something that evokes even greater fear and anxiety amongst many non-Muslims. Many people fear that a mosque will provide Muslims with a center to isolate themselves from the rest of society and to undermine the peace and well-being of the local town or city or even of the nation itself. I have personally seen that such fears do exist amongst many people in the non-Muslim world. And regrettably, such angst and suspicion of Islam and its followers continue to rise. Nevertheless, the truth is, and will always remain, that Islam is completely opposed to all forms of extremism, terrorism, or violence. It condemns in the strongest possible terms any attempts to violate freedom of belief and freedom of conscience. Under no circumstances does Islam permit coercion or force in the matter of religion. Rather, Islam teaches that religion is a matter of the heart that is written in the Holy Quran. Thus, I firmly believe that the widespread and common perception of Islam amongst non-Muslims are actually misconceptions. In terms of any mosque, it is vital to look at its true objectives according to the teaching of Islam. What do Muslims intend when they build mosques? A true Muslim, I should say. If a person judicially assesses the objectives of a mosque and the reasons why they are considered to be sacred places to Muslims, they will soon realize that true mosques are not there to be feared. In order to alleviate any apprehensions that may exist amongst uh, the local community, I shall now briefly mention the core purposes so that you can all better understand what this new mosque and indeed all true mosques represent. <clears throat> a primary objective of a mosque is, of course, the worship of the one God. And so mosques are a place where Muslims join together to bow down and prostrate before God Almighty in worship. Such worship is offered five times a day and is known as Salat. This is fundamental pillar of faith for every Muslim, which he or she must observe. A second crucial purpose of a mosque is to be a place for Muslims who join together for worship, to be able to strengthen their mutual relations and to develop unity amongst the community members. Hence, through, the, the, through their mosques, Muslims are able to forge greater ties of kinship and to establish an atmosphere of brotherhood and mutual sympathy. The third pivotal objective for any mosque is to be a means of introducing non-Muslims to the teachings of Islam and to fulfill the rights of the wider society. It is to provide a platform and venue from which Muslims can join together to serve their local community and to help all members of society, regardless of creed, caste, and color. 
chapter 4, verse 37 of the Holy Quran states that and worship Allah and associate not with Him and show kindness to parents and to kindred and orphans and the needy and to the neighbor who is a kinsman and the neighbor who is a stranger and the companion by your side and the wayfarer and those whom your right hand hands possess. Surely Allah loves not the arrogant and boastful. In this verse, the Holy Quran instructs Muslims to show kindness and compassion to a whole range of people. It calls on them to serve their parents, family members, other relatives, and also vulnerable members of society. It also places great emphasis on fulfilling the rights of other uh, of uh, one's neighbors. <clears throat> neighbors are not just people who live in a person's immediate vicinity. Rather, the scope of neighbors in Islam is extremely far-reaching and includes those who live near. We will, uh, we as well as those who live at a distance. It includes a person's colleagues and his travel companions and much more besides. Therefore, in essence, all of the people of this city are the neighbors of this mosque. Thus, instead of destroying the peace of society, true mosques are built to foster peace between the people of different communities and beliefs. In short, mosques are a place for Muslims to elevate their, their bond with their Creator, God Almighty, and to fulfill the rights of fellow human beings. <clears throat> Mosques that do not fulfill these paramount objectives are worthless and merely hollow sh shells that serve no purpose. Since its foundation, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has built mosques across the world, and our history testifies to the fact that wherever we build mosques, we endeavor to fulfill the objectives that I have just outlined. Through our conduct and behavior, we seek to practically manifest and live up to our community's slogan of love for all and hatred for none. We seek to build ties of friendship with non ahmadis and non-Muslims. We strive for interfaith dialogue. We value and cherish our neighbors. We are ever ready to help those who are in need. We champion the rights of the weak and deprived. We are there to serve the community and to be loyal and faithful citizens. This is our faith and this is our teaching. This is why we build mosques. In light of this, I hope and pray that it is clear to all of you that a mosque is not something to be afraid of. A true mosque is not just a center for people to worship God Almighty, but is also a stage for them to serve their fellow beings. Chapter 107, verses 5 to 7, uh, 5 to 7 of the Holy Quran state, so woe to those who pray, but are 
unmindful of their prayers. They only like to be seen of men. These verses categorically declare that the prayers of those people who worship God but who fail to discharge the rights owed to his creation will be rejected. Their worship and entry into a mosque is nothing but an act and a superficial gesture. The Holy Quran is very clear that their prayers are meaningless and their hypocritical ways will lead only to their disgrace and despair. Consequently, <clears throat> the reality is that true Muslims who worship Allah the Almighty with sincerity can never do anything that harms or negatively affects the peace and well-being of a society, nor can they seek to undermine or seize the rights of other people because to do so would be to betray their faith and to abandon the teachings of the Holy Quran and of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Thus, let me once again reassure you about this mosque. You have no reason to be anxious or concerned. The, <coughs> the doors to the mosque will be forever open to all peace-loving people. They will always be open to those who value humanity. I am entirely confident that, God willing, this mosque will prove to be a symbol of peace, radiating nothing but love, compassion, and brotherhood throughout the city and far beyond. It will serve as a beacon illuminating its surroundings and spreading light in every direction. It will be a house of peace in which the worshippers join together to serve their neighbors and to fulfill their rights. It will represent the enlightened teachings of Islam and dispel all fears and myths that exist about our religion. God willing, any lingering fears that may remain in the hearts of and minds of the local community will vanish altogether. When they see this mosque or meet the people who worship here, they will soon realize that there is no need for any apprehension or trepidation. Whilst in, it is uh, easy to make such statements, I am convinced you will soon attest yourselves to the fact that Ahmadi Muslims practice what they preach and are people who not only proclaim Islam's teachings of peace, but to uphold them. It is my firm belief that the local community will soon realize that what I have said about the objectives of mosques are not sugar-coated words, masking a bitter pill, but represent the honest truth. At this time, I would also like to say that it is up to all members of society, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, whether religious or non-religious, to work together for the peace and prosperity of the world. Rather than making allegations against one another or pinpointing each other's flaws and weaknesses, we should open our hearts to others and show grace and compassion. Instead of attacking each other's religions, uh, religions and needlessly provoking one another, it is the urgent need of the time that we exhibit mutual respect and tolerance. 
true and long-lasting peace cannot certainly, certainly develop with the click of our fingers. Rather, it requires us to focus upon those things that unite us and which bring us together, rather than letting our differences divide us and break our societies. I truly believe that we are passing through critical juncture in the history of the world, where both at a national and international level, the world is becoming increasingly polarized and divided. We stand upon the brink of disaster. And so now is the time to take a step back and focus all of our energies on protecting the future of mankind. Now is the time to show our humanity and to spare no efforts in developing peace in our communities, in our nations, and indeed throughout the world. Only if we come together and respect each other, each other's beliefs, can we begin to heal the bitter rifts that have taken root in much of the world. Only then can we bequeath a legacy of hope for our children. Only then will we leave behind a prosperous and peaceful world for the coming generations. We must not be blinded by self-interest and greed. Rather, we must open our eyes and look to the common good. It is my sincere hope and prayer that all of us, no matter our religion or beliefs, can work together with a spirit of benevolence and mutual respect, and that our shared ambition is to make the world a better place for the, those who follow us. Our common goal should be to foster peace, harmony, and goodwill between the people of all communities. And we should constantly aspire to and strive to leave behind peaceful world for our children in which people are able to live side by side, irrespective of <coughs> differences of race, religion, or belief. May Allah the Almighty enable us to all, to all work together for the betterment of mankind. I mean, at the end, I would like to thank you again for joining us. May Allah the Almighty bless all of you. Thank you very much. To conclude the formal program, we humbly request Hazur to lead us in silent prayers. The silent prayer. I mean, it was a real honor to meet with His Holiness. His message of hope, of peace, of love is so desperately needed here in America and around the world. And he spent time out of his schedule to come here to our city and our state. We are deeply honored. Him bringing that here to the community in Baltimore, which, uh, you know, has its bright spots, but it also has its trouble spots. And uh, a lot of people could benefit holistically, even if they weren't from the Muslim faith, to, uh, to latch on to something like that. I was incredibly inspired because he reminded us that it's about love for all and hatred 
for no one. Um, and at the end of the day, it's about love, compassion, justice, and that's what we need, especially in the city of Baltimore. So I was incredibly inspired and in and, and awe that his presence was here, and it was very, very much timely. Well, I think we need leaders that are willing to step up and bridge the gap uh, between people uh, who sometimes don't always understand, especially minorities in this nation. And uh, there needs to be more dialogue, honest dialogue, and, and people that can do it peacefully and respect everyone while doing it. Well, I was very much uh, impressed with his speech. Uh, being a Roman Catholic, he also reminded me very much of our Holy Father, who has the same basic message of, of peace among all humankind. I'm a Hindu, uh, but I'm here, and, and I think that's what it needs to be. We all need to be together. And that's, that's the message that what I got is that we are all humans, and uh, we, we can all work together for the peace. It's important for people of other faiths and other cultures to, to have an understanding of, of, of Islam and um, for people to actually take the lead in that, which is what His Holiness was here for and all you guys organizing these events, is very important for the community. So I was, you know, I felt educated and open just to hear about the message um, and the inclusiveness. And I'm happy for you guys with this brand new beautiful mosque. We're a Catholic school and founded by the Jesuits. And one of the, the things that we always talk about that we emphasize is the importance and the value of interreligious dialogue uh, and listening and understanding uh, others. And uh, His Holiness's emphasis on peace and care and love and compassion and unity uh, is something that, that we try to instill in our students uh, all the time. I, I think that's the key to creating a more civilized and, and peaceful world. Uh, the mantra or motto uh, love for all, hatred for none, is something that we all as human beings can uh, embrace. So I think his message was very timely, uh, especially in the midst of, of a lot of uh, political uh, rhetoric, a very inflammatory rhetoric, especially that's been directed uh, to Muslims. Uh, it's refreshing to hear uh, a, a man of his stature come and deliver a sensible, reasonable, pragmatic message such as himself.